Hello everyone, welcome to part 2 of building MovieList TMDB app with Swift UI. In this video, we're going to focus on building the movie model and TMDB API service. First, let's create a new Xcode project. Select single view app and type Swift UI movie DB as the project name. Save the project into the directory that you prefer to. Let's create a model for the movie next. Let me open the JSON response of the movie list API with Visual Studio Code side by side. From the project navigator, let's create a new folder and name it models. In the folder, create a new zip file named movie. Declare the movie model using a struct that implements the codable protocol. Also, looking at the JSON response at the root level, we have the results key with an array of JSON movies as the value. Let's declare movie response struct to represent this. As you can see, TMDB is using snakecase convention for naming the fields. In Swift, we are going to use camel cast for naming the properties. We'll customize the JSON decoder key decoding strategy to convert from snake case later. Let's move on to create a protocol that represents our API service. From the project navigator, create a new folder named services, then create a new file named movie service. Declare the movie service protocol. Before we declare the methods, we need to create the movie list endpoint enum. This enum represents the endpoints for the movie list API. It has four cases now playing, upcoming, top rated, and popular. We use string as the raw type of the enum. For now playing and top rated, we override the default value to use snake case. The raw value will be appended to the URL path of the movie list API later. We also declare the description for each case, so we can show it in the movie list. To represent error when making our API call, we need to declare movie error enum that conforms to Swift error protocol. For the simplicity of this tutorial, we declare five error cases. API error, which is a generic error. Invalid endpoint, which is an error when constructing the endpoint URL. Invalid response, which is an error when the HTTP response status code is not in the range between 200 and 300. No data error, and at last, serialization error, which is a JSON decoding error. To show the error tags to the users, we implement the localized description computed property. In the body, we return the copy text for each of the error cases. To print the error tags properly when the error is casted as NS error, we need to confirm to custom NS error protocol and declare the error user info dictionary property. In this case, we use the NS localized description key with the value of localized description that we created earlier. For the movie service, our first method is for fetching the movie list, given a movie list endpoint enum as the parameter. The parameter also accepts an escaping closure using the Swift result type. The type of success data is movie response, and for the error, we use movie error enum. The second method is for fetching a single movie given an ID of the movie. The type of the ID is an integer. The parameter of the success closure is the result type with the movie as the success data. The last method is for searching movies when given a query string as the parameter. The type of completion closure 
is the same as the fetching movie list above. Next, let's move on to build the concrete class that implements the movie service. Create a new file named movie store in services directory. Declare the movie store class. Make it conforms to movie service protocol. We're going to use the singleton pattern for this class by declaring a static shared constant and set the initializer as private. This will make sure the instance can only be initialized once in the runtime. Next, let's declare the API key constant. Copy the API key v3 from TMDB website by logging into your account. Paste it in here. It looks like there's an error here, where I incorrectly instantiate the movie service protocol instead of the movie store class in the shared constant. Next one is the best API URL constant. Let's take a look at the HTTP request manager app for the host name. Let's copy and paste it into our code. The URL is https api.themoviedb.org. We'll also need to add additional path, which is three, for the API version. To make a URL request, let's declare the URL session using shared URL session from the system. We'll also need a JSON decoder to decode the data. Let's create another class named utils.swift. In here, we declare the JSON decoder as well as the dead formatter using static property. The JSON decoder key decoding strategy is to convert from snake case as the JSON response from TMDB is using snake case as naming convention. We are using a custom date formatter for the date decoding strategy. For the date token format, let's take a look at the JSON response. It is year, month, and date, which translates to yyy hyphen mm hyphen dd let's go back to moviestore.swift file declare the json decoder constant with the value of json decoder property from utils class let's implement all the required methods for the movie service protocol before that let's create a helper method to load and decode an URL into data using generic method. We'll need to constrain the generic placeholder to make sure it conforms to decodable protocol. The method also accepts an optional dictionary as the parameter. This will be converted to URL params with escape person encoding format. The completion closure is the result type with the generic placeholder as the success data type. Declare the URL components constant by initializing URL components struct. It accepts an URL. The initializer itself returns optional instance. So we need to use guard here. If the failure is nil, we just complete passing failure with invalid endpoint error. Next we declare the query items variable. It contains the array of URL query item. URL query item itself is a struct representing URL parameter key and value. First, we have the API key URL param. The value is the API key constant we copied from TMDB dashboard. Next, we use if let to unwrap the params dictionary. If the value is not nil, we append the params by transforming it into an array of URL query item by assigning the key and value. Let's assign the query items variable to URL components query items property. At last, we can access the URL components optional URL property 
using the guard statement. By using this approach, all the query items will be escaped using the save person encoding format. Next, we use the URL session data task method by passing our final URL. Inside the closure, we check if the error is not nil. If yes, we call the completion closure passing failure with API error as the result type. But as you all know, the URL session data task closure is being called in the background thread. To make sure we call the result completion in the main thread, we need to declare a helper method. This method accepts the completion closure and the result using generic placeholder. So we can constrain the data only for the codable type. In the method body, we use dispatch queue main async to switch to main thread and invoke the completion closure passing the result value. Let's use this helper method in the data task completion handler, just like so. Next, let's use the guard statement to cast the URL response to URL HTTP response type. We can use the tilde equal operator to check if the status code is between 200 and 300 range. If not, we return earlier by passing invalid response error as the result of the completion closure. Let's unwrap the data using the guard statement. If it is nil, let's return and pass the no data error to the completion closure. Last, we need to decode the data using the JSON decoder decode method, passing the generic placeholder type that conforms to decodable protocol. As this method can throw an error, we need to wrap it in do try catch block. If no error, we just invoke the completion closure by passing the success decoded data as the result value. If an error is thrown when decoding, we pass the serialization error as the result to the completion closure. At last, to make sure it works correctly, we need to invoke resume. We'll also need to declare the weak self to make sure there is no return cycle when we reference self inside the closure. Let's implement fetch movies body. First, we declare the URL by passing the best UAP URL string slash movies slash the raw value of movie list endpoint. If the URL is not nil, we invoke the load and decode method passing the URL as well as the completion closure. The Swift compiler can automatically resolve the generic placeholder as movie response truck conforms to decodable protocol. Let's copy and paste the same implementation for all the other methods. We just need to change the URL for each of the method. For fetching a single movie, we're going to append the ID as the last path component. Also, we need to pass additional params. In this case, we're going to pass the append to URL response with the value of video and credits. Finally, for the search movie, we are going to use the slash search slash movie as the URL path. For the additional params, we set the language to n hyphen us. And also, we make sure not to include the adult content in the response. The region is going to be US. And at last, we have the query key. This will be the text that user types in the search bar. Next, let's create an extension for the movie. Give it a name of movie plus stop that's Swift. In this extension, we declare a static helper stop for array of movies as well as single movie. 
This will come in handy later when we build our view using the Shift UI Live Preview. To do this, we need to import the JSON response files into our project. Create a new folder named Resources and drag the JSON response files into the folder. You can download the JSON files by cloning or downloading the project from the GitHub repository by using the link that I provided in the description. To help us to load and decode the JSON file from the bundle, let's create an helper extension for the bundle. This is a generic method that accepts the file name of the JSON as the parameter. Using the bundle for resources method, we asked the system for the URL path in the app bundle. If found, we decode the JSON using the JSON decoder from the utils class. Let's declare a static variable named stop movies. The top of this is an array of movies. Using the extension method that we have declared earlier, we're going to load and decode the JSON by passing the movie list as the file name. As this is just a stop use in debugging, we can just force unwrap the values. Next, for a single stop movie, we can just use the stop movies value by accessing the first index. That's it for the second part of this tutorial series. To summarize, we have implemented three things. The movie model, movie service, movie store. Also, we have created a helper extension that will help us to create a stop model using the JSON from the bundle. Thank you for watching the video. If you like this tutorial, please subscribe. Until the next one, bye.